And as you can imagine, reaction is pouring in. In fact, Harry Reid's successor as the Democratic leader in the Senate, Chuck Schumer, put out this statement tonight on Reid's passing. In part, it reads, Harry Reid was one of the most amazing individuals I have ever met. He was tough as nails, strong, but caring and compassionate, and always went out of his way quietly to help people who needed help. He was a boxer who came from humble origins, but he never forgot where he came from and used those boxing instincts to fearlessly fight those who were hurting the poor and the middle class. He was my leader, my mentor, one of my greatest, dearest friends. He's gone, but he will walk by the sides of many of us in the Senate every single day. Now, Chuck Schumer, of course, is now majority leader of an evenly divided 50-50 Senate. It is worth noting here that the last time that happened, the last time the Senate was split 50-50, Republican Senator Jim Jeffords of Vermont switched parties and actually handed control of the Senate to the Democrats. The man who made that switch happen was Harry Reid. Reid even gave up his committee chairmanship to sweeten the deal and to get Jeffords to make that leap. But of course, Harry Reid was not just a Senate leader. He was a senator from Nevada, search like Nevada to be precise. And so, of course, he left his mark most especially on his home state, and his constituents. In fact, just two weeks ago, Las Vegas renamed its airport in Reed's honor. Travelers to Vegas will now fly into Harry Reed International Airport. Joining us now is John Ralston, CEO of the Nevada Independent and the Dean of Nevada Political Reporting. He was the first to report the news of Reed's passing tonight. Uh, it's great to have you with us. I know it's such a sad state for a sad night for your state and certainly for people across this country. Let me start by getting your reaction and the reaction of, of people you are talking to in Nevada tonight, the family and the constituents of that great state. Well, you know, I mean, it, it is a sad night, no matter how you felt uh, about Harry Reid. Uh, he was a remarkable figure in, in Nevada's history. And, you know, I'm I'm writing a book about Reid and, and and it's clear to been clear to me for a while and even more so after the research I did that he is uh, the most influential, most important public figure in the history uh, of Nevada. And obviously, because of his time in the U.S. Senate, one of the most influential of the last quarter century or so. And, and you mentioned a lot in your uh, intro of, of what makes him such a fascinating figure, one, one who doesn't lend himself to the social media clips of today, and you're already seeing the the, the pro and the con uh, pour. And he was he was a very contradictory man. He was ruthless as any person I ever covered, and yet he also there are so many stories of of private kind gestures to people high and low uh, uh, of Harry Reid. I mean, all of the lore that you hear about Harry Reid. I mean, the the the, the son of a hard rock miner who grew up in abject poverty, who lost one Senate race, then ran for mayor of Las Vegas and got crushed and should have disappeared from the political firmament, resurrected by a governor, was the gaming uh, regulatory chief. And by the way, there is so much about his time there that is not known, including the story that you told about Jack Gordon and uh, Reed wanting to strangle him after the bribe attempt. There's a lot more to that, too. Uh, he is just uh, one of those politicians who doesn't fit into some uh, easy description on Twitter or Facebook. And, and there are so many stories that I know and have been told since I began to research uh, the, the, this book. He truly uh, is one of a kind, was one of a kind. Yeah, and I, and I want to speak to you a little bit about his legacy and how he changed our national politics, for good or for bad. But I do want to just go back to that point that you were talking about there, and that is his humble beginning. His legacy in Nevada really began all the way back uh, with, as we just mentioned there in that setup, his tangling with the mob when he was the head of the Nevada Gaming Commission. But undoubtedly, it must have shaped his worldview, his politics, coming from such humble beginnings to the height of American legislative power. Talk to me a little bit about this and his early legacy before he entered national politics. Yeah, yeah that, that, that you're, you're right on both of those things that you mentioned, the time in the Gaming Commission, but especially uh, when he was, when his character, I believe, was forged in this tiny speck of a town in, in Nevada called Searchlight uh, outside of Las Vegas, where he lived uh, most most of his early life, he 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 had to hitchhike to get 
uh, to school. He had to learn to swim uh, in, in a swimming pool at a brothel. All of those stories are true. But the, he, he really lived in horrific poverty uh, with, with his family, with an alcoholic father who would later commit suicide. And Reed then committed himself to some legislation on suicide. And there's a lot more that he did. But that toughness, that grit, that, that no patience for anything or anyone except to continue moving forward in his life was forged in, in that tiny town of Searchlight. And it certainly came out during his time as the, as the state's chief gaming regulator when, when the, the, not only was that bribe attempt uh, a part of history, but his car, uh, a, bl a bomb was planted in his car and only by, by happenstance uh, did, 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 did that not blow up. And he told very poignantly of his little five-year-old son uh, appearing out the window uh, when, when, when law enforcement came to defuse that bomb uh, in his car. There is a famous video clip I urge everyone to go see it of Harry Reid confronting uh, uh, the mobster or mob front Frank Rosenthal uh, during a gaming commission meeting. It is a fascinating uh, piece uh, of, of video. Frank Rosenthal, to make him more accessible, was the person mm. that Robert De Niro's character uh, in Casino was based on. Uh, it, it is really worth right. watching that clip to see the toughness of Harry Reid. And John, I mean no disrespect to the state of Nevada and to the residents of that great state, but he also managed to get Nevada to punch above its weight uh, in our national political discourse, because even after his retirement, uh, Harry Reid continued to play an extremely important role in Nevada politics and the way that Nevada politics impacted our national politics. His endorsements were key uh, in the early Nevada presidential primaries. Everybody knew where to stop after Iowa and what happens to Nevada's Democratic political machine after this, I guess, is, is really up for grabs. How, how does it change Nevada Democratic politics, uh, and who's in line to take his place? Yeah, it's a great question. There'll never be another Harry Reid, uh, Eamon. And his dominance of, of uh, Nevada politics uh, as a gatekeeper, as a person whose ring needed to be kissed, and even if you kissed his ring, he still might slap your face uh, with his hand and say <laughs> he's not going uh, to support you. He was absolutely ruthless in that role as well. But he was a tremendously polarizing figure, both nationally and in the state, because of the way he just had no patience for the niceties as his is famous hanging up on people without saying goodbye from President Obama all the way uh, to some person that, that, that a friend of his who might have called him. There is no one who is going to replace Harry Reid. His machine is still intact and the, and, and the gears are still being oiled by the same people he uh, put in place, but it'll never uh, be the same. Uh, and again, I've, I've used this word way too often and I'll use it again, I think for the third time in this interview, his ruthlessness uh, was part of what mm. defined him, but he always thought he was being ruthless in, in service of what he thought was the right goal, including, by the way, if I may say, his going nuclear in, in 2013, I believe, which many Republicans yeah. now rejoice that he did, saying he's responsible for those three Supreme Court justices under the Trump uh, administration. Uh, when I interviewed him for the book, and I have 24 Zooms on this computer uh, with Harry <laughs> Reid, which is more than he talked to, to in, in almost his 35 years of service, uh, he has no regrets. And I mean no regrets uh, for, for, for doing that, but it'll be one of the things he's remembered for and not so favorably by members of his own party for many, many years. And listen, uh, two things. One, make sure you back up the hard drive on that computer because we are going to want to see every minute of those 24 <laughs> Zoom interviews you did with him because there is a lot of insight in those interviews, I'm sure. But I I'm curious to get your thoughts, John, on this. When you look back at whether the way he changed or impacted the filibuster, his uh, ability to pass the Affordable uh, Health Care Act, the Obamacare bill, uh, whether or not his views on doing away with the filibuster now that he wrote about as recently as of September of, of this year, what do you think Harry Reid's legacy will be? What will he be remembered for on the national stage? 
Well, I, I think some people will, will remember him for, for that and, and not in, in a good way. Some people will blame his leadership style for the beginning of the degradation of the legislative process, the polarizing partisanship. Uh, but uh, you cannot take away from him uh, uh, what his legislative genius was. Barack Obama would never have passed the health care bill that bears his name, Obamacare, without Harry Reid. President Obama would acknowledge that, and so would everyone else around him. His tenacity, his legislative skill, his essentially legalized bribery of some of his colleagues to get uh, their, their votes, Eamon. Uh, I, I wrote back at the time, and I believe now, even having collected more uh, data and reporting on what happened during then, it should be called Reed Care as much as it should be called uh, Obamacare. Uh, and uh, maybe only Harry Reid possessed the skills that he honed o o over all those decades uh, in public life and, and his dedication to knowing everything about the Senate. Only he could have gotten that done. John Ralston, I couldn't think of a better person to speak to tonight on the life and legacy of Harry Reid. Uh, John Ralston, CEO of the Nevada Independent. Thank you so much for joining us uh, on this sad night for your state. Greatly appreciate it, John. Appreciate Again, you the breaking me. news, Thanks as so we much. mentioned earlier, absolutely. Out of Nevada, longtime Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid uh, passing away this evening at the age of 82.